Welcome to Fading Memories, a podcast with advice, wisdom, and hope from caregivers who have lived the experience and survived to tell the tale. Think of us as your caregiver best friend. Thanks for tuning in to the Fading Memory podcast. I'm your host, Jennifer. I hope you're not having to multitask too much today while listening to this show. I know I'm always multitasking when I'm listening to podcasts, but today we're talking about dementia engagement, activities you can do at home. So I know you're gonna wanna be able to take notes. So help me welcome Kara and Riley. They are from the New Pond community in Massachusetts. I think I got that 99% correct. (laughs) Close enough. Well, at least I got your guys' names right. Yep, exactly. <laughs> so you guys, are you guys both activity directors at New Pond? No, so I'm the mind and memory um, director, so I oversee the entire memory care community. Yeah, and I'm the, I'm the program coordinator in our memory care unit. Awesome. So tell us a little bit, a little bit about what you guys do at New Pond that, you feel or know is different than like the memory community my mom lived in they had activities but um they were i don't know how i want to say it that's the activities they did pretty much met the level that most of the residents were at it's probably the most objective way of putting it they were Mm -hmm. they were pretty basic but then most of the residents were pretty pretty far along in the progression of their diseases so what what makes you guys different? Uh, I would probably say what makes us different is that activities is pretty much the center of our neighborhood, right? So, you know, that's the enjoyment in most of their day. Um, and, and looking at it as everybody's involved in programming and activities. That means nursing, that means administration, uh, nursing assistants, and programming assistants, yeah. like including everybody, families, um family participation um and just making sure we're giving them a purpose a sense of purpose and enjoyment at the same time and that sounds actually it's like so logical i don't understand why they all don't do that we are both pretty logical like there's a lot of you know there is a method to our methods you you know we know we do a good job but we often look at each other and are like we're just doing our job yeah (laughs) yeah well, like I said, my mom's community, they had coloring and they had the bingo where you covered all the squares. Um, they went on like a weekly bus ride. I'm not really sure what they did. They they were just in a suburban town, yeah. um, but they you know, got them out. I was always surprised my mom did that, but um, she wouldn't do that kind of stuff with me. So what she did as a resident participating with other residents and what she did with me were always different, which was challenging what else did they do there was um they would have their i don't know they don't i don't think they had a specific activity director so that's that's the first place they needed to fix Mm -hmm. um but they would have like one of the care staff like would read to the residents which i always thought was really interesting but i've uh, recently done an episode on reading and dementia and how to keep them engaged and it's like oh okay now i can see why they they bought into that i mean they would read like parts you know like they would read a novel i think it was usually a classic novel i never was around for too much of the reading (laughs) and i would read my mom and her friends like really short humorous stories stuff that Mm -hmm. was short enough that they could track through the whole thing or at least i was pretty pretty sure they could track through the whole thing so I'm assuming you guys do stuff that's like more engaging than bingo and coloring. So why don't you tell us like mm-hmm. what kind of stuff you guys do? Yeah. So um, I have six, we call it the, here at Benchmark, we call it the six dimensions of wellness. So when I'm coming up with my calendar every month, I need to have um, seven physical activities a week, seven social activities, five emotional, three spiritual, and three sensory activities. So that's kind of how my... Um, my calendar is structured. Mm-hmm. Um, I also find that half the half the buy-in with it is your attitude. And if you come in and you act like you're excited to do it and you're ready to do it and let's get it done, let's do it together, we'll have fun, they'll get more buy-in from the residents and more engagement that way. So uh, your attitude is very, very much a big part of running activities with this um, 
demographic. Mm-hmm. They read off of us. So, so yeah. if we're positive and, and our energy is positive and there, that's the part of the brain that's continuing to work throughout the whole disease is the amygdala and the emotional piece so that if they're reading positive emotions, they're going to buy in more yeah, and exactly. um, they're going to have a better time with it and engage more. So our, you know, we do a lot of training on body language and, you know, um, smiling, facial expressions, um, things like that, because that really one positive can lead to another positive. Right. So um, and we kind of focus a lot of our activities on that. So that makes sense. It sounds like a lot of planning every week. <laughs> Yeah, yes, it is. A, it, a lot of planning yep. goes into it. Yes, every every activity that I do has a has a purpose behind it. Mm-hmm. Um, whether that be we're gonna re- we're gonna reminisce and talk about what our family traditions that we did on Sunday, mm-hmm. or we're gonna sit here and we're gonna exercise because it helps us with our balance and our core strength and and all of that stuff. It's it, and I find that it's important that if you explain why this activity is beneficial and why they. Um, would want to do it, then you also get more buy mm-hmm. Like That's interesting because I'm not sure I would have gotten the same buy-in utilizing those methods with my mom, which I know there's a difference. Now, she thought I was her mm-hmm. best friend, but mm-hmm. I think there was still that subconscious memory that she was mom. I just don't think she had the language anymore to, you know, describe the relationship. I mean, she remembered who I was other, you know, I don't think she remembered my name, but that's okay. I'm lucky. I remember my name. Mm -hmm. Um, And she would always tell everybody, Oh, this is my best friend. I've known her forever, which would make everybody giggle because yeah, obviously you've known me my entire life longer than (laughs) anybody else. Um, But I'm wondering, I, I, I wonder if I always approached it with like, this is important. Like this is what I want to do. Cause she would have been just fine sitting around shooting the breeze she would ask me the same question so what have you been up to lately and i would answer her and then i'd be like well what have you been up to and she literally would say you know same old like really lady like you're not giving me anything to work with here (laughs) like i don't care what you tell me maybe you told me you went to the moon on a rocket last week i would work with that but no she (laughs) she never gave me anything to work with so i had to I had to come up with our own activities that she would actually do. And we ended up essentially, we would go to parks and pools and the library and wherever else there were children to watch. So we were like creepy old ladies stalking on little children. I say that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> One day somebody asked me what I was going to do with my mom. Like, oh, we're going to go watch kids. And they didn't quite remember at the at that exact second that she had Alzheimer's. And so the expression on their face was kind of like, uh, hmm, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute, do I need to uh, report this? And so it was always funny to get those reactions, but trying to get her to exercise or like, I guess if I had inc- incorporated some reminiscence, like, Hey, let's do, you know, sweat into the oldies with the Richard Simmons or jazz or size or two things she probably would have remembered. But how do you do like, let's start with the physical activities, because I know with, where my mom lived, my mom was one of a small percentage of the residents who did not need any kind of walking aids. Most of them had walkers. A lot of them walked watching their feet, which my mom did when she was outside. She didn't do that inside as much now that I think about it. So how do you, how do you help them? Do you have other care staff that help with the physical activities or you could describe it? (laughs) Yeah, I mean, Riley can describe, she does different things. It doesn't always have to be the same yeah. physical activity. And I think that helps to yeah, switch things up. up. Um, and also, like, you know, we talk to families a lot and do a lot of education about not expect, like, what we expect. Don't expect it to be perfect, right? <laughs> Don't expect, like, what we have in our head may not be how it tran- transpires, you know, and, and comes out. Um, so, you know, different physical activities can be anything from walking or an actual uh instructor led exercise um game yeah some sort of game yep balloon tennis volleyball Mm -hmm. um, things like that just stretching yep well stretching is so important Mm -hmm. so i i i'm a dedicated peloton member and many of the instructors 
use the phrase progress, not perfection, which like, duh, you know, they shouldn't have to <laughs> remind us all the time that that's what we're going for. But, you know, if it's a stretching class or a weightlifting class, it's always like, you know, I'd rather you do it right than, than have, than have more reps. So it's, mm -hmm. you know, I, exactly. when you said, you know, tempering expectations, that was the first phrase that came to mind, progress, not perfection. It is and, true. I mean, yeah. we, every day is different for us and, and making sure, you know, our expectations are like, we have structure, but yeah. it could go south and exactly. to be able to kind of adapt to that. Yeah. I always find that it's very important. Like I do come up with a calendar with five to seven activities a day, but that doesn't mean that I'm also not throughout the month, keeping things in my back pocket yeah. to, to say, cause you might get to an activity and the residents might be like, I don't want to do this and no one wants to do it. And you're like, okay, well, you got to like be quick on your toes, adapt. read the room, adapt, come up with another activity on the spot. Do you find that they gravitate to certain types of activities? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So um, what my, is, what... My, yeah, my residents personally could do trivia and word games all day long. Mm -hmm. All like I, I usually have to be like, all right, we got stop. My my voice is getting hoarse. We gotta we gotta wrap it up. But they could they would be totally content doing that all day long, or even just sitting outside enjoying the sunshine. And they could do that all day long. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Do you guys then, have a a courtyard for your memory care? We have it's a beautiful beautiful courtyard, courtyard. Really, yeah. and it's actually pretty big. Um, has walking paths. It's a it's a great area. Yeah, we garden. We have a little garden club. Vegetables, flowers. All nice. Yards. We talked about adding a vegetable garden to the courtyard where my mom lived. Theirs wasn't huge. It was big enough. Um, and it was, so the middle was in the sunshine and then the, the, the rim, the outer rim was basically had the overhang from the roof. So mm -hmm. you could sit out there in, you know, the hot, hot, which my mom mm -hmm. liked. So, and, yeah. or even in like, not that we would do it because we don't like it or we didn't like I don't like it. She didn't like it. You could sit out there in like a spring rain if it was not too, too cold. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we like it warm or my mom and I liked it warm. It's like one of us still around. The other one's not. So it's hard to hard to get the right um, the right context in there. So if they would like to sit outside, do you engage them in anything like is that when you might do the reminiscence therapy? Yeah, yeah, of course. Or even if we're, I usually will bring a speaker out there and we'll do like a sing along. Uh, yeah, but yeah, lots of lots of reminiscing. It's very good for them. How do you like introduce that, or kind of how do you get that started? Because I think that's one thing that I was never good at with my mom was like figuring out where she was at in her mind and then going there with her. The one yeah. time that I was really successful at that was when she told me. So my mom was the oldest of four. It was her, the two brothers, and then her sister. And this one particular afternoon, she's like, well, I think my brothers are normal people now. And I just about cracked up seriously. <laughs> and I said, I mean, like, I was on my game that day because I was like, oh, you think so? Well, I think Stephen, that's the younger of the two brothers i think steven's pretty normal but i don't know about richard and she laughed and mm -hmm. i had to like restrain myself because my mom's sister is was 11 years younger than her my mom got married at 18 or 19 so that means my aunt was still pretty young and so my mom wasn't around for my aunts growing up so my mom kind of forgot her sister which was really painful because my my aunt went and visited whereas the mm -hmm. older brother was gone in the wind but yeah, that was a great day. That was a great day for a couple minutes of reminiscence, sort of. But how do you get them started on that? Because I think that's something a lot of the listeners might might benefit I think, from hearing like, about. You sometimes come up with a topic. Yeah. Sometimes there's that and it's more structured. But sometimes we could, if we had a group walk in this room right now, we could, you know, there's chocolates in front of us and we could take the chocolates and go and talk about like, what was your favorite candy bar or um and kind of go off on that um when we do baking you know what was the we'll, we'll start with like were you a good baker so, and they're very honest yeah. with their answers <laughs> um and then sometimes it's what's the best thing you made and then that might lead into what kind of ingredients did you need for that so i think it's we're we're pretty that yeah. comes kind of natural to us probably because we do it every day yeah. 
but um and it kind of just dominoes like you you start off with one thing and then you realize you're like wow we're not even on top of what we just started with <laughs> but it doesn't matter because we're we're sitting here we're talking mm-hmm. engaging so i think sometimes too it like goes to knowing your your residents too right and or knowing your family member well um and in ta- asking questions we're not shy to ask questions to families right like what were they like when they were when they were a young dad you know or um, what did they do for a living? So like we can kind of have that in our back pocket to if they're struggling with a reminiscence answer, we can kind of say, well, I know you were a teacher or, you know, things like that to kind of, you know, um, try to get it out out of them. Um, but knowing them is huge. Yeah. Knowing about them. Yeah. And that and to piggyback off of that, when a resident first moves in, um, their family completes what we call a resident profile. And it asks them questions about their interests, their siblings, any significant um, loved ones that they've lost, past pets, things like that. And I study those and then I take all their interests and I try to create my calendar around the consensus of the group's interest as well. It's probably easier with like the women, because you said you asked about like your favorite candy bar and then you morphed into baking. I'm like, I pretty sure most of the male residents didn't do a lot of baking yeah although i'm thinking yeah. now about well, my maternal talking about like like, like golfing what did or... your what's your favorite dessert or yeah. you know things like that so like we we do tailor it to the guys too yeah, um definitely. yeah you know definitely um we can tailor it differently if we need yeah. to be but um yeah they chime in that's for sure and they yeah and they'll surprise you sometimes you yeah know, like wow i that's amazing that you just Sometimes they surprise us and we have to verify with the family. Like, yeah. like is this true? Yeah. And, and then they'll be like, yep, that's yeah. true. That's yeah. accurate, yeah. That must be fun, learning learning new things about the residents through their answers. But it's probably mm-hmm. also... Right. They're e- still in there. Yeah, they're yeah. still there. You they know? just need a little bit of help coming out. Mm-hmm. But they're, they're still in there, for sure. Well, my maternal grandfather was a chef in the Army during World War II. He never left stateside because he had um, damaged his trigger finger on his right hand with a handsaw. Didn't stop him from hunting, according to my mom, but it kept him, you know, stateside cooking for the army officers. And he was a really good cook. And he was really good at, we call it kitchen alchemy. Like you open the fridge and like, what the heck's in here? My grandmother would open the fridge and see nothing. He would open the fridge and turn you know, make a great sandwich or some sort of really delicious meal. Now I'm wondering if he ever baked, if he did any baking for the officers. I have to see if I can figure that out. Because when you were talking about how it morphs, I'm like, oh wait, I bet you <laughs> he never had yeah. dementia. But it's like I can see how you learn new things from the residents by just just talking. Mm-hmm. Do you, do you guys, I'm sure you hear stories that are just completely made up as well occasionally yeah, sometimes yeah and that's when we go back to the families and we're like that's when we yeah, verify that's when we verify with the families if if what was said was accurate <laughs> yeah they're funny though they remember like long-term memory still intact a lot of times and so like things like they'll tell us like what was the name of your first you know girlfriend and they like pull that out yeah. sometimes yeah. and uh, did you ever go to a drive-in movie you just did that last week exactly. i know so yeah. you know things like that can be funny we use humor a lot too like you were saying with your mom like humor is a huge piece of redirecting calming um it it just it does so much for for our residents so we use that to deflect too well laughing just feels so good i know that the phrase you know laughter is the best medicine which is a cliche but you know that's actually really quite true yeah really that really is what is the mix of your residents my most memory cares that I've been to are like 90 something percent female. Is that typical for you guys as well? It ebbs and flows. Um, I would say right now it's about 80, 20 female, I I would say. Um, but that can, you know, that can change. Um, so yeah, it's the majority female right now. Yeah, right now. Okay. Okay. So we were, we briefly talked about the physical activities and how to get people engaged. Can we go a little bit deeper on that and talk about how like a loved one can help their, like how I could have helped my mom be more physically active. She was 
the worst to walk with. Like my long-term listeners know this story upside down, left and right. But my mom would walk looking at her feet. She needed, needed, needed no aids. And she would walk like 10 to 15 feet behind me. And if I slowed down, she would slow down. If I stopped, she would stop. And if I turned around to like make sure that there was no obstacles for her to trip over, she would stop. So it was like, there was no getting this woman to walk next to me, in front of me, elbow and elbow. No, it was like, I got her to walk elbow and elbow with me one day and it ended up with her telling me to go drop dead, which was my mom's version of F you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so she was not interested in that. And I always feared that she would face plant on the sidewalk, which obviously would be bad. And then, you know, all of the helpers in the world would be like all up in the arms because I was such a terrible person not letting her catch up. I did have a past guest, um, Tammy Anastasia, done two episodes with me. And in our conversation, she's like, wait a minute, your mom was the oldest of four and your aunt is 11 years younger than mom. She was watching the kids. That's why she yeah. walked behind you. And I'm like, hello, you, where were you five or six years ago when I, I could have used, <laughs> used that? So I wasn't really big on walking with her. Be I, we, I, I did that in the beginning when she was in memory care, but as her disease progressed, it got scarier and i really didn't want to rile up like the helpers in the world <laughs> to get all over my case if my mom fell because you know i was quote unquote being neglectful so how how do we help them especially if they don't walk well or do need aids how can we help them be a little bit more physically active without you know worrying about face planting on the sidewalk <laughs> mm -hmm. I think it's it goes back to knowing them and their abilities, right? Um, I mean, we have residents that could run laps around us. Um, <laughs> and and then we have residents that are pretty um, advanced and, you know, physically unable to participate in, like, a structured exercise group. Yeah. Um, so I think meeting them where they're at is huge, like, with your mom letting, you know, letting walk in front of her, right, um, and letting that letting that be kind of change expectations. Um, and, and we often encourage, like, if there's someone that can't walk well, but they can walk short distances. So if the short distance is to the dining room and then from the dining room to the program room, or that's their exercise, right? So, um, and then also like range of motion activities. So um, having the nursing assistants help with that during care. So if they're advanced and they can't, do their exercise kind of on their own or with an instruction, kind of moving their body, right, mm -hmm. um, with them. Um, that, hopefully that answers yeah. it. You can also, when in doubt, you can always just turn it into a game. Yeah, or a dance. Yeah, a, a game a or a dance. Um, we've done like exercise bingo before. Um, hmm. They love the, um, I call it pool noodle tennis, which mm -hmm. I think, yep, um, they love that one. Um, like things like that, you can always just turn it into a game. Like we've done before sing along exercises, like with, um, like hanging out the washing on the Siegfried line, yeah. you know, like pretend to place the washing out on the Siegfried line, like, um, like doing stuff like that or like YMCA, that's yeah. even like a, that's like an exercise. Too. Yeah. You guys got to be creative with Including it. Including music and it's huge. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Uh, I know my mom, let's see, they, they would do, and I'm, I'm, it's probably similar to the Pool, pool noodle tennis is they would do the balloon swatting or they would yeah you know like volleyball mm -hmm. the balloon around which considering her visual processing was absolute garbage she had pretty good with that i guess because yeah. the balloon moves slow enough but yeah i was i was always kind of surprised she did some of those things but maybe it was because it's stuff that i never considered doing yeah because you know, mm -hmm. although we had a dog when i was like junior high and high school who absolutely loved to chase party balloons <laughs> you, <laughs> you'd pull on it and snap it so it would fly and she'd chase it and ears Aww. were flying backwards yeah it was like so that's so if i had thought about it and put two and two together and got five i would have remembered that the dog liked it she might have remembered that dog i don't know she didn't seem to have long-term memory either it was weird mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, you know, some of it was my needing to learn different things. So just keeping things. I like the like the pretending to do things kind of movement, because that's 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 easy thing that all of us can do with our loved one at home. 
So yeah. how do you get them started like on the reminiscence therapy? That's the that's the advice I needed seven or eight years ago. <laughs> Um, I'm more, I approach it like a conversation. Mm -hmm. I don't approach it like, a, okay, everyone, let's sit down. We're going to do a reminiscing activity. Yeah. I more just kind of like, I see it on the calendar or, um, uh, or whatnot. And I approach it as a conversation, like a discussion group mm -hmm. almost. Um, I don't sit down and say, let's reminisce. I kind of <laughs> sneak it in there and then we, and it kind of just snowballs into a big conversation that everyone usually joins in on. And what kind of topics do you start talking about? Are they like timely? Like we've got the Olympics coming up. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Yeah. Yes. There's something. Oh, I was say, there's something else coming up. Um, this would not be quite as topical, but I like to watch parts of the Tour de France. So it yeah. should be yeah. interesting because I think this is the first year in like, I don't know, like over 100 years of the Tour de France that they're not actually going to end on the Champs Elysees because of mm -hmm. the Olympics. I don't know. I, I got to figure out how that, that's like when one starts and when the other starts. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot uh, of TV. It's more TV than I normally watch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so like, yeah, the Olympics are coming up. That would be a great one. Like, what's your favorite Olympic event? We actually had that conversation the other day. And like, if they look at me and they're like, I have no idea what you're talking about, then I'll mm -hmm. pull it out of them. Like gymnastics or do you like the summer Olympics better the, or the Olympics, uh, winter Olympics better? Which one do you prefer? Would you rather watch ice skating or gymnastics? Would you rather watch curling or track and field? Like what 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 did you like to watch? Or um yeah, so like current events. I also every morning we start our day off with doing like a, a this day in history mm -hmm. segment. So we'll I'll I have like a list of things that happened on this day. So like our top hit from this day in 1965 is the Supremes with this song. And then we'll play it and then we'll talk about it. Do you recognize that song? Yeah. Does that song make, how does that song make you feel? Does the song make you feel happy, sad, like things like that? We that had a lady sense. That, that said that was my wedding song. Yeah. 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 And she song. said that was my wedding yeah. song. Yeah. Um, it was Barbara Streisand, I think. Yeah. It was Barbara Streisand. Yeah. Um, that leads into a lot of reminiscence yes. here yeah. on this day. I was going to say, that's really sweet. So that, that could take the conversation like another whole couple hours. Exactly. Like, oh, what do you remember about your wedding? Like, um, yes. did you wear a big princess ball gown dress? Was it a small wedding? Was it a big wedding? Things like that. And then just keeps going into what kind of food it's did you have? Yeah. yeah, exactly. I think too, that you give good visual cues too. So like she can, um, you know, put on the TV screen, like, so she could look up if they say swimming's their favorite Olympic yeah. event, she can put on like, you know, pictures of Olympic swimming and yeah. things like that. So yeah, it kind of exactly. triggers memories and it's a visual cue as, for some too. Makes sense. So there was a thing. Oh yes. Um, so when you're picking like, so you said like the hit, the hit to the hit today in whatever year, mm -hmm. do you pick decades that kind of, correlate with like their young to middle adulthood yeah i usually do um 50s 60s 70s starts to get mm -hmm. a little bit blurry but um 40s 50s 60s is usually the the decades that we that they remember most that's when they were teenagers and that's when most of your memories usually stick with you especially with music yeah because they always played like big band and early 50s music and my mom mm -hmm. was one of the younger residents so she moved in at 74 and passed away at 77 and she loved big band music so that was not a big deal but i i never could work get connected like it could never help her connect to music that was mm -hmm. like one of my biggest struggles and i think again long-term listeners should know this my mom loved talk radio and daytime talk show tv she would literally put on either the radio or the TV, depending on whoever was on at the time, on each end of the house. And while she went about her chores, she would, you know, catch most of what was playing. And people have asked me, well, did you play her your podcast? I'm like, no, because I was always afraid she'd realize you're talking about her sometimes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I should have found like some like old school type podcast that was similar to like the 80s talk radio. Um, yeah. Um, what was that guy's name? Jim Olson? I don't think that's quite right. But yeah, there's there's like some big names that for some reason are not popping into my head right now that she would have connected. I think she might have connected to them. But it, I never also used headphones, which I understand would have helped too. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, wasn't, I was never successful with the music reminiscence. 
and I didn't try very hard with talk radio because mm-hmm. I wasn't, well, first off, you know, it was always topical, like a lot of podcasts are today. So I guess I should have played her some like old Oprah or some old um, Sally, Jesse, Raphael. It might be, that's oh, probably, <laughs> yeah. oh, you guys remember, okay. I'm like, she's way before yeah. your time. <laughs> And it's there's you know be I'm a Gen Xer and so now they have all those you know the TikToks and the YouTube channels where they they talk about the Gen X the Gen X generation when we're if and when we grow old I don't know why it's an if but whatever and you know they talk about like future nursing homes and how they should turn old old malls into like retirement communities for the Gen Xers with the skating rink and the movie theater and the food court. <laughs> And I'm thinking, oh, I, I wouldn't it's hate that. Idea. It's fun, yeah. <laughs> you know, reduce, reuse, recycle that old mall to, to something that we need. Yeah. So tell me, so you talked about, so we had um, physical reminiscence. What am I missing? Like you said, there's like seven of them. And now yes, I, have, I have six dimensions, um, physical, social, um, purposeful, emotional, spiritual, and then sensory. So what do we do for purposeful? Because that sounds really important yes yeah um so that could even even be like community service projects um we uh last summer we did homemade dog treats and uh donated them to the local shelter um oh my mom would have loved that yes um we have a volunteer group that comes in um uh high school uh community service high school what student council yeah student council yeah council they come in that's purposeful um They'll come in, they'll arrange flowers, they'll do this, um, they'll play games. Um, that gives them a sense of purpose, like, okay, I'm going to get up and I'm going to yeah. hang out with the kids because the kids want to hang out with me. Mm-hmm. Um, setting the tables. Setting the tables. I have, like, if, if there, I have, like, a bin of a bunch, just a bunch of mismatched socks that if I ever see someone who's, like, looks a little anxious, just pull out the bin, hey, could you help me both match these socks? I really don't have time to do it right now. Could you help me out? sense of purpose, folding napkins, mm-hmm. um, things like that. Welcome committees, handing out flyers. If I yep. need help handing things out, helping me clean up, at, especially after like art projects, everyone is so gung-ho about, like, all right, let me help you clean yeah, up the you table. Have, like too many people. Yeah, I have like, yeah. like, <laughs> I need, like more jobs. I need to like, yeah. make a bigger mess so that they can help me clean it up. <laughs> yeah, I was working towards trying to find activities like that my mom could help with air quotes Mm -hmm. on the word help um, because as she progressed in her disease she got less and less willing to accept help and i was like we need to like get this balanced out and i didn't want to obviously add to the responsibilities of the care staff and that was one of the things i was like well maybe she could set the tables although the plates came from the assisted living dining room already filled and i wasn't too sure about her visual processing and her walking to dish out plates and like, I didn't want, didn't want her to make a mess. I thought, I thought she could maybe put the cloth napkins on the tables. Cause you know, if, if one table got 10 and one table got zero, then, you know, it's not going to be a big deal, but unfortunately COVID kind of took over and I never did find a solution that I thought was, that would benefit my mom that wouldn't add to the workload of the staff. So that was something I did try. So I'm glad that you do that because I'm assuming that most of your female residents were homemakers and, you know, they did all of those things. Like, you know, I, my mom should have vacuumed. <laughs> it's just about dawned on me. That has like, a, um, it's not a vacuum per se, but it's like it a sweeper. Like push sweeper yeah. thing. And my uh, mom would have been fine with that too. She had one of those. I mean, I should, oh, geez, I don't know why I didn't think of vacuuming, but whatever. <laughs> Hindsight's twenty twenty. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Well, you know, four plus years later, I finally figured yeah. it out. Yeah. Um, is there other, what are the, what kind of like purposeful activities do you do that the men gravitate towards more? Cause I know I've had conversations with people who are like, everybody talks about activities and they're always female focused. So I'm trying to make sure we talk about the guys as well. Yeah. So, um, the, the men definitely, absolutely love when the kids the high schoolers come in they're they're probably the favorites yeah they're they're probably the ones that enjoy it the most um a sense of purpose wise um the men still would enjoy um folding napkins and doing Uh things like that um baking could be considered something that's a sense of purpose which the men do like Mm -hmm. um gardening i have a i have a few men who love to garden um that that gives them a sense of purpose they want to go out and 
water the plants, make sure that they're doing well, things like that. Artist, that with a couple good artists. Male oh, artists. yes. That, yep. that is a sense of purpose because they like to, like, show it off kind yeah. of, you yeah. know, others, too. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of impressive. It is. Yeah, they are. They, they are that makes sense. Like, see, I can't picture my dad, like, being comfortable folding napkins because I don't think in my entire childhood I ever saw him fold clothes. He must have yeah. at least occasionally done something like that. Yeah, but... it's, it's, it's all, as I said before, it's all about the, the approach mm -hmm. and how you approach them. Like I if I were to just, this. yeah, if you're just saying, all right, fold these napkins, have fun, they're not going to want to do it. But yeah. if you say, I really need help folding these napkins before dinner, could you please help me? That get, makes them feel like, oh, I'm important. They, she needs my help. Why don't I sit down and I'll, yeah. and I'll help her do it, which is always a good strategy to have. Like your approach means everything. Yeah, the way you have like a me card. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they're they're all yes, they're always willing to help. They're like, oh, do you need help? Sometimes it's um, I gotta do this or I'm gonna get in trouble. Yeah, <laughs> and they're like, oh, we don't want that. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. that's cute. So the mm -hmm. the bit of mismatched socks. Does it ever mm -hmm. frustrate them that they can't find the mate, or do they just pair up socks mm -hmm. that kind they, well, of match? Well, I I do. I made sure to get very like specific patterns mm -hmm. that are easy to match. So like, um, they don't usually get very frustrated unless they're very um, progressed in, mm -hmm. in their stage, then then I could see it, some frustration. But like, if they really wanted to, they could sit for an hour or two and won't, and won't get up until they're done with the bucket. And I think it's key that like, we don't care if they're not matched right. Exactly. Right. right? So like, like, I'm not gonna be like, oh, I'm not correct. So if they're matching too, and they think there's a match, it's a match. It's a match. Yeah. So. <laughs> It's important I, to step inside their world yeah, and, right. and see what they're seeing. I didn't expect that you would expect them to actually match them, but I just pictured like my mom had a friend in memory care who actually her visual processing was still really good because she was still able to read. Like my mom could read, but she couldn't process mm -hmm. the words on the page. And I could picture her sitting there literally trying to match all these mismatched socks and then getting quite frustrated and angry with you about that yeah. um she was and I she was a every, character every there is a pair and every mm -hmm. there is a pair like they're not actually mismatched like every every sock has its buddy that <laughs> goes with it but yeah <laughs> well this is a good recycle tip for those of us who end up with holes in socks yeah just like don't throw and them away <laughs> throw them in a bin yeah and <laughs> you know because i've got socks that are similar enough that they can match them up. I mean, they're all the same brand and they, they look they look all the same, but the colors are slightly different, mm -hmm. not terribly different. So it would be easy to like, oh, well, here's like a dark gray one and the navy blue one that have holes in them and match those up. So yeah. there's like a hint for you. I have a, like, like outrageous socks, hearts, like, like hearts and yeah. rainbows <laughs> and cats and dogs. And it's like, it, they're very, very different. But yeah. <laughs> well, that's a tip for the golfers and the cyclers out there because we all, I'm a cycler and I don't know why like loud, obnoxious socks are a thing. I don't have loud, obnoxious socks. My favorite pair of black with a, um, it's, they, I have one pair of black with a pink skull and crossbones and the other one is black with a, a pink blonde. <laughs> that should be no surprise to anybody that knows me very well. <laughs> Cyclist. And she's basically got her feet sticking out. So she's like kind of crazy. Um, but for the most part, they're not loud and obnoxious. They're kind of subtle, but most cycling socks are almost like offensive to your eyeballs, <laughs> at least in my opinion. So we've talked about the, per so let's, do we want to talk about the, the, um, spiritual real yeah. quick? Yeah. So obviously when you think spiritual, your, your first thought is religion, but there are many other spiritual activities that don't have anything to do with religion, um, whether that be yoga or meditation. Um, spiritual could be getting your nails painted, a hand massage, um, things like that, anything that makes you feel at peace. Um, I do a segment that's called uh, Scenic Views and re Relaxing Tunes and Scenic Views. That's also spiritual. You, you have like, um, yeah, like, <laughs> like you have like calming music, I put on the TV, like I have the residents pick out a destination, like Cabo, Greece, and we'll go like, it's like scenic, scenic, almost like a scenic ride through the country. Mm -hmm. um, that, that 
can, uh, can be considered spiritual. You can do uh, that with the Peloton app because they have yeah. scenic rides. I don't know if they have other scenic. I just have the bike. Like, I'm not insane. I don't have their other equipment. But, yeah, they have the scenic rides, which are pretty yeah. cool because they're global. Yeah. And I and a lot of my residents were world travelers. Yeah. And they love seeing places and being like, oh, I, I think I've been there before. Mm -hmm. That looks familiar. Or I would love to go there. Let's get on the plane and go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you're kind of making me want to do a scenic ride on my bike on my Peloton. <laughs> Yeah, it's do it most mornings. Yeah, you walk, we all walk by on the way to a meeting, and we're like, "Oh, it's where nice are they today?" Yeah, it's yeah. a nice way to start the day. Um, and like other things like celebrations of life, um, tai chi, yoga. I think mm -hmm. I already said yoga. Um, music, music. Uh, yeah, music is always spiritual, especially if you're doing like hymns or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, my residents they respond to music more than anything else. Mm -hmm. I want to say. They love their music. Trying to remember, they always had music playing in my mom's residence, but they would they would bring in like a, for lack of a better term, like a singer songwriter. So they'd have like one musician and a singer. Always seemed to be like guy, guy girl couple kind of thing. I don't know if they were actual couples, but and my mom seemed to really enjoy that. They'd all sit there and listen and clap and enjoy. Yeah. So I'm sure that was kind of nice. Um, I don't know that they did anything else with music. I mean, I wasn't there all the time, so mm -hmm. I don't know all the things they did because it could only go so many hours a day. Right. <laughs> um, well, to wrap up, because this has been really fun, and we could probably talk for another hour about all the different kinds of activities. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what What's your like top piece of advice for somebody who's caring with their loved one at home who is struggling to find ways to keep them engaged, to keep them ha feeling like they have a purpose in life while they're also trying to do the 500 other things we all have to do every day. <laughs> yeah. Um, my biggest, uh, there's a lot of advice I would give, yeah. but um, my we biggest have a few thing minutes. Would, <laughs> yeah, would be to enter their world, but, right? Like meet them where they're at. Um, you know, don't try to do the, do you remember when, um, challenging and as much as that's hard for families, um, that can just be frustrating. Right. Um, kind of change your expectations. Yeah. Right. Um, we often say be on, be okay with being uncomfortable, yeah. right. When you're doing an activity, even if you're being silly and things like that. Um, my biggest thing is get support like get support of others that are, you know, support groups are huge. Um, even calling, you know, if you have someone at home calling your local memory care unit, talking to the director and saying, Hey, this is where my mom's at. Can you give me some suggestions? Um, we got in this field for a reason, right? And so, yes, we take care of our 28 residents here. Um, but, you know, we're here as a wealth of information to try to spread that and, you know, help others, but support groups are huge. Um, you know, and I think a lot of times people have a fear of going, you know, but I think once they go and feel like there's others that, um, are going through similar things, um, it normalizes it. Yeah. And then there's also different ideas they can come up with activity wise. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, not always the, correcting things like that, not expecting things to be perfect. Yeah. Exactly. On the support group. So I've been on both sides. I was in the support group and now I facilitate one. Mm. My very first meeting as a participant, I felt helped. And then the second meeting the following month, I felt like I was giving help. So it's you, yeah. you really benefit when you share, like when you're doing mm -hmm. the helping, even though you're like, gosh, I have this this big thing going on. And we had a pretty big group. So sometimes you were lucky if you got to do more than remind people what your name was. So the other question I had, just because this is something I super struggled with when I first started taking care of my mom is how do you get in their reality? That is the one thing. Nobody could explain that to me. They're just like, well, you just have to be where they're at. I'm like, what does that mean? So can you explain like your yeah. theory on that? Yeah. I never, never argue. That's right. part of it. Right. So their reality needs to be yours. Right. So don't argue with them. Um, you're never going to win an argument with someone suffering from dementia. Like, don't try, you know? <laughs> um, 
so kind of enter where they're at. There's a lot of agreeing yeah, and going with the flow is I think entering yeah. their world, um, you know, and meeting them, like not, not trying to go backwards to where they were even like, you know, earlier in the disease or when they did not have the disease. Um, so just kind of meeting them where they're at with their abilities, their cognition, um, and going, going with the flow is my best explanation yeah. of yeah. that and not arguing with them. You know, I think all, all too often, I think that's a hard thing to do for families. It's an easier thing for, for us yeah. um, to not argue. Um, so that makes sense. Yeah. So do you have advice Riley on how a family caregiver can be a little bit more engaged with their loved one, maybe not have them plopped in front of the TV, which we know is terrible mm -hmm. for our brains. Yeah. Um, yeah. Going off of what Kara said, I think it's, it's very important to their reality becomes your reality. I think that you said that perfectly. Mm -hmm. And I, again, I think it's, it's important that you become comfortable with being uncomfortable mm -hmm. because you have to take things as they come and kind of, let them soak in, but also re respond in a way that's beneficial to the, the resident themselves. Um, like so, agreeing my brother or my uncles were normal people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. exactly. Yes. Yeah. Like even if it's and, not right, if that's, if that's their reality, it, it will be, yeah, it will become my reality too. So. I still to this day wonder what triggered that statement. Like it was kind of out of the blue, but I'm yeah. really proud of myself that I did not ask her about her sister. Because I think in the back of my mind, I knew that she'd be like, I don't have a sister and I didn't want to go there. So, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I think too, knowing that things that may bother a family member going, because the family member is going through the disease just as much as the resident, right? So I think, no, like things that bother the family, like you have to ask yourself, is it bothering them? Yeah. Right? Like, is the fact that my mom has a striped shirt on with the wrong color pants? is is she happy with that or it it might bother me but is she content yeah that's another way to, to enter to let things, yeah mm -hmm. let things go yeah i'm working with one of my support group participants has higher expectations for personal dressing and hygiene of their person mm -hmm. than is realistic and it's I get it. I know where she's at. I felt the same way, but I learned real quick that as long as my mom was clean and dressed appropriately, like we were, we were leaving the mm -hmm. residence one day. I think I was taking her to the nail salon and she did not remember any clothing that was, she remembered stuff that was 20 and 30 years old, which was like two and three sizes too big. So her blouse slipped off of her shoulder and I glanced over and I was like, Oh, I wonder whose sports bra, black sports bra that is. <laughs> and I had to make like a literal nanosecond decision to not care. I mean, at first you're kind of mm -hmm. like, ew, she's wearing somebody else's bra. <laughs> like, no, thank you. I didn't even do that in college. So, you know, like, but then I'm like, I'm not going to fight with her to change clothes. Like, that is not what I came for today. And all of that literally happened in like, less than a second so it was like yeah, that's a hard thing for a lot of family yeah yeah well yeah because i think you know like if i had gotten into my head i would have been like well my mom never wore sports bras pretty 99 percent certain she never wore black bras so this is not her this is not what she'd want she'd feel icky if she knew it was somebody else's bra i'm assuming it was clean i don't you know i didn't even go down that path mm -hmm. um, i just assumed that it got in her laundry because that no matter how much you labeled it the laundry always got mixed up it had help um <laughs> that's a whole other episode on the on the little helper that wandered things around the community but it's just like i didn't want her to feel uncomfortable i didn't want to end up in a argument with her over what she was wearing because everything she was wearing was technically wrong it was too big it didn't you know, it didn't look good. but you know mm -hmm. when she was dressed appropriately i think things matched pretty well so it was like this is this is not this is not the fight that I was going to pick with her today. And so that's, mm -hmm. you know, I guess that's being where she was at. And we went and got her nails done and life was good. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, so how, if somebody's like, oh my gosh, I want to talk to these ladies. Um, can I put your emails in the show notes so that somebody, oh, absolutely. you know, and yeah. um, that way they can email you 
Um, I'm in Cal. See, we're all the way across the country from each other. Yeah. Um, I have had a past episode on utilizing the the knowledge of a senior care living employees. So you guys should check that one out and one on yoga for people living with dementia, which was really cool. So we're really trying here to give you a lot of great advice on what you can do with your loved one, mostly because mm -hmm. that's one of the things I struggled with. So mm -hmm. I, I want to thank you guys for joining me. I know we like talked about doing this episode ages and ages ago. <laughs> I know. Time <laughs> flies when you're doing 500 things a day. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I would appreciate it. And I hope you guys really gained a lot out of this episode and yes, thank you can always so listen to it. If you need, if you didn't have a chance to take notes, if you're doing other things while listening to podcasts, which is the whole reason yeah. that I started yeah. this show, because I knew family caregivers were busy and this is something you can listen to while doing those 500 other things. So thanks so yeah. much, ladies. And thank I hope you guys have you. a, you're welcome. Stay cool. <laughs> uh, well, it's dropped 10 degrees from yesterday, so that's good. <laughs> that's all we can ask for. <laughs> Fading Memories is also available wherever you get your podcasts.